Today, we're going to talk about music and ideology in the Cold War. One of the largest non-military forms of war in human history, a full-scale confrontation in public, economic, and culture took place in the period 1960 to 1991, which is known as the Cold War, with the United States and the Soviet Union as the main leader of the two sides. The music of this period includes popular music composed in response to the anti-war sentiment caused by the outbreak of some localized hot wars in this landscape, as well as popular music composed in response to thoughts of nuclear deterrence. Another form of music was heavily ideological and political during this period. Ideology usually refers to a set of ideas that guides how we receive and understand the world. French structuralist Marxist Louis Althusser, he coined the term ideological state apparatus. According to that, it's a procedure for the downward transmission of ideology by the ruling class, which in authoritarian societies uses cultural and artistic works to sustain ideology and obedience of the road. In addition to ideological propaganda, this procedure also suppresses literary and artistic works of different ideological propositions and their authors. Musical and cultural works that incorporate ideology have both sides of the competition to infiltrate and propagate against the opposing camp, trying to re-establish their values and culture in Europe. An organization based in the U.S. called the Congress of Cultural Freedom was trying to counteract the influence and propaganda caused by the Soviet Union by utilizing musical and literary criticism. The specific object of this video is to discuss the political characteristics of music and how the ideological music affects the world landscape and the context of the Cold War. Former East German leader Eric Conker raised the question of how to accept Western music but not fall into a trap made by Western politicians and regard Western music like pop or rock music as a part of political separation by the Western camp. A serious musicological paper from Eastern Germany in the early 1950s noted that Western music would trigger a slight Americanization since the American entertainment industry tries to kill many birds with one stone. The takeover of the music markets of other countries and bury their cultural independence with the popularity of Boogie Woogie. They promote the hostile ideology of American monopoly capitalism through superficial art, criminal and psychopathic films, alarmist tactics, and a penchant for war and destruction. In the Cold War period, music seemed to be made for ideological confrontation it has been given a lot of political interpretations by different camps between West and East. Music comes from daily life, and politics is also part of life, so music with political dimension is an inevitable phenomenon. At special times, authorities need music to match their political publicity, and this music will be extremely popular for a while. But time is the best screaming mechanism. The really excellent music pieces will be disseminated and spread through the age. Like a song that comes from the anti Japanese war period in China, on the Songhua River. This is a typical political song at that time. It expresses the emotion of people from Manchu leaving their hometown, complaining about the Japanese invasion and gaining determination to win the war. The same song is also known as Yellow River Cantata, Unity is Strength, and even China's national anthem, March of the Volunteer Army, and all of them were born at that time. Thus, the use of songs for political domination, wartime propaganda, and nationalist construction took advantage of the fact that music could carry an ideological character. Now, let's have a taste of these pieces. Oh,
Diplomatic activity confronts the public with real people who have real feelings. When music is used skillfully in public diplomacy, it has an extremely important impact on the country's political security, sovereign independence, and national identity. In the face of the vigorous Soviet cultural offensive, U.S. officials argued that the new cultural program should target a more strategic audience: those with unclear attitudes, vaccination. Confusion, indifference, and skepticism in free world. These elite members of the upper echelons of society have greater power and voice, and if they embrace the American concept of freedom, they will have a significant impact on national political decisions and public opinion. Of course, jazz musicians insisted on performing not only for the elite but also for the people. American jazz musicians conveyed the ideas of freedom and equality to the Soviet public, especially to the young people, who became the main cultural infiltration in this musical diplomacy. Because young people usually have a natural affinity and acceptance of new things and cultural products, at the same time they have not fully formed their own value system and are usually influenced by the outside culture. When they grow up and enter society, national production and living system, their ideology will influence the direction of the country, and their childhood immersion in Western liberal ideals is very conducive to the infiltration and evolution of the Soviet camp by the West. It's because young people are full of rebellion; didactic propaganda can only be counterproductive to them, while jazz, rock and roll, and other anti-authoritarian music. Can make the United States to be more democratic. The Soviet Union hated Western music because of its message of rebellion, thwarted their efforts to indoctrinate the younger generation with official propaganda. People tend to have a better understanding of music than of literal things because humans are born more emotional, and as human trait that infants initially use emotion to think rather than reason. Even in a country camp like Soviet Union, which was ideologically hostile to the United States, music could still break the political ice and widely sought seeds of free thought. We speak to the power of music as a weapon of cultural diplomacy. At the same time, the music exchange can also guide public opinion and public sentiment, making countries that are otherwise hostile to the United States. Muslims and other people interested in American culture, thus promoting dialogue among civilizations and reducing the cost of defining national security. Bill Brody, president of Music Television Europe, once said, "Music may have played a huge role in ending the Cold War. It was a window into the West and symbolized the trend of free expression of emotions. When we came to the Eastern Bloc countries at the time." We found that people there already knew us through parroted audiovisuals. Some scholars in the West have also argued that the end of the Cold War was due in large part to the continued infiltration of Western music, films, exhibitions, and other cultural products that finally broke the Soviet Union apart. That's all of this video. Thanks for watching.